How you doing? This is Josh Googie. We're here at the Googie Institute where I do all of my uh, wood sculpting and my creating and uh, very uh, excited to be asked to give you a little insight into what I do on a daily basis from the Ward Museum. So come on in and let's check it out. So this is where I work every day and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration and answer some questions. So enjoy. Okay, so first of all I'm going to answer some questions um, sent to me from the uh, Ward Museum and uh, kind of just explain my, my background and, and what I do here every day. So the first question is when did you start carving? I started carving um, basically, when I was born, I grew up in a, a house where my dad was a uh, sculptor. Um, here's a uh, early shot of me, uh, probably about eight or nine years old, with some of my earlier carvings. It was it was always a part of what I did growing up. Um, my dad worked in the garage. I would go down there, see what he was doing, and, and work alongside him. My uh, grandfather and my dad would take me to the ward show. I remember when I was younger, um, I was just a kid going there and seeing all the art and definitely got hooked and pulled in. And so I've, I've pretty much always done this. I started selling about 12 or 13 years old and this was my job ever since. So it's, it's really all I've ever done and all I've ever known. So. I probably wouldn't be good at much else. Um, the next question is, what was my favorite project to work on? Um, I like doing uh, songbirds, so um, that's what I always bring to the show. Um, I have done bigger things, but, but uh, the smaller songbirds are more comfortable to me because I've done more of them and um, I'm a little more, more familiar, so that's kind of what I focus on. Next question is, what mistakes have you made or, or challenges you've had while working? I've made a whole bunch of mistakes in my life um, with, uh, with carving and without carving. Uh, I, I think some of the, um, one thing that comes to mind is a piece I was working on before the show. It was a vermilion flycatcher, had it all finished, and I was about to meet uh, a buddy of mine, Adam, he's also filming, and uh, we were gonna drive down to the show. I had the piece all finished, and I had about an hour to kill because I was packed and ready to go, and I figured I'm gonna take some, some shots of my finished bird, so I set up an area I start shooting the bird and I don't I bumped something on the table and the bird literally tipped over beak first busted the beak I had a little wire in the beak so when it broke I I didn't lose the piece but it was totally snapped in half and um, and so I'm freaking out and I called up my buddy I said it's gonna be a couple hours I went, I came back here and I put the beak back together as best as I could and uh, took it to the show. No one at the show saw it. So um, I know that happens all the time. I'm sure other artists out there would, could give you a hundred stories of things they've broken along the way. Um, I've done all kinds of things. I've dropped pieces after they were finished and, and ready to go out the door. And so I've gotten really good at uh, fixing things, repairing mistakes. Um, because when you do this real detailed, um, delicate type of work that we do, you're going to have to learn how to fix it because it's going to break and it, it's, it comes with the territory. So um, that's probably that something that, that uh, popped in my mind. That, and there's, there's plenty more stories, believe me. But that's one that really um, hurts every time I think about it. Um, what do you listen to while you work? I listen to... A variety of things because sometimes I'm here for days on end and, and you get bored and and you can't listen to the same thing every day. I listen to a lot of rock and roll. I'm a blues guy, rock guy. I like uh, classic rock. 
Um, been listening to the Black Keys lately. They're they're always a favorite of mine. But um, old school rock and roll. Um, but then I switch it up. Sometimes I gotta listen to talk radio. Sometimes I um, I don't know. I talk to myself. I get bored. Um, I'm in here. At, at times for days on end working on projects and always looking for new stuff but um, usually typically if you come in here you're going to hear some some blues or rock and roll um, those are the questions i wanted to answer now i want to uh, quickly talk about uh, a piece that i've made for the ward uh, championship back a few years back in 2017 these are cape may warblers and um, I competed with this in the life-size category at Ward. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces that I've made. And I just want to uh, give you an idea of how I go through the process of making something like this. And it all starts from um, either an idea in my head, something I've always wanted to do. I keep a sketchbook with a lot of little thumbnail sketches of ideas that I've had. Those ideas come from my life experience. So it might be a time I was out bird watching one day on my own and I saw a warbler or I saw a certain bird or it landed a certain way and that kind of stuck in my mind. Um, sometimes it comes from pictures, from videos, researching. Most of my better work the, the, the actual story develops from uh, some kind of experience I've had in nature. So usually bird watching, um, being out in nature, that's when I, I really tend to get inspired. And, and whatever the piece is becomes more personal to me. And I found that when the piece is more personal, it has an emotional connection with other people too for some reason. And, and people pick up on that and it becomes more successful. So... Um, I start out by, once I know the birds I want to want to use, um, then I go and research and I collect reference. This is the actual um, study drawings that I did of a Cape May warbler from, a, from the Field Museum in Chicago. I went there, I got the bird, and I did all my measurements so I knew everything would be exact. And um, that's the basis for, for my carving, and I know everything will be the right, the right um, proportions and everything. And then from this sketch, I have to um, figure out, you know, the position of the bird, what the bird's going to be doing. And, and I actually do um, hundreds of thumbnail sketches for each project. Real little sketches, real simple, nothing fancy. Trying to figure out the flow of the piece, the design of the piece, and the layout. This was a more finished drawing of the design that I really liked when, when I was working on um, going through the process here. So it's just a nice sweeping S-curve here. I wanted a, a little bit larger base that would blend into the branch here with the warbler at top on the top there. So from this sketch, I want to, you know, a sketch is one thing, but seeing it in three dimensions and, and understanding it in three dimensions is totally different. So what I did on this particular piece is I cut out out of a foam block here a basic shape of what I was looking for in the base. Um, I also went out in the uh, forest preserve and I found some of this thorn uh, bush branch that I liked. And this is a real branch I just glued to the base here. And that helped me just visualize what I'm doing. And at one point I had all these branches glued on here. Wherever I wanted to arrange them, you kind of uh, arrange them like a bouquet of flowers to get the uh, design you want. And that was kind of a starting point so I knew what the piece would look like. And then from that point, I start building. So eventually, this was the final design. You'll notice there was no second bird in this drawing. And I, I like my pieces to evolve as I go and to change. And I'm kind of following the art and, and the art 
and the piece is telling me what's going to happen next sometimes more than I'm controlling it. It sounds weird, but it's more of an evolution in the process than, than coming up with a set picture and then creating it to be exact to match the picture. Because things change, you know. As you start moving around the piece, you might see something that's off. You need to move a branch, you need to move a bird or whatever. And anyway, when I started building this and putting the branch together, roughing the branch and this bird, that's all I had on there. Down here seemed really empty. And I added a branch with some berries to it and it still wasn't enough. And I needed to tie the bottom of the piece to the top a little more together. And that's where the concept of the female bird came in. And when I built the branch here, I started with some copper piping, copper tubes, or not copper, brass, I'm sorry. And uh, that's what I use to build the branch. And I'm just mimicking what my examples from nature here. I, I love all this rot and this decay. This are some, some berries here you can see that are kind of falling apart and rotted out. And um, on the piece here, I've uh, emulated that, some of these berries that are shriveled up. I love doing that stuff. It's, it's really fun and it makes the piece really come to life. It makes it more believable. There's also some exaggeration on here. You'll notice um, the berries I found, I, I exaggerated the colors a little bit. You can see some of the color on here when, when they're dying. But when I pulled these out of the branch in the forest preserve, they were more vibrant, more um, bright greens and bright reds. And those colors wouldn't, wouldn't really flow with my piece. So I exaggerated the maroon color, the yellow colors in the bird, and tried to get some of those colors incorporated into, uh, into the piece. You can see on the brass here, I've added uh, Fix-It Epoxy, my favorite epoxy. It's a two-part. You mix it up, stick it on the copper or the brass or whatever material you're using, and you can carve right on it the next day when it dries. So it, it uh, is one of my favorites to work with. Here's a little berry before it was uh, finished when I was experimenting. And so anyway, um, I put the piece together, I paint it. Um, it's a lot easier to say that than to actually do it. It takes a long time. This took me a couple months to work on, but I was pretty happy with the, uh, with the end result. So I'm um, happy to share with you um, a little bit of what I do and how I do it. And uh, very thankful to Ward um, for uh, all the things they've done for me over the years. I've, I've developed as an artist um, just tremendously by the relationships I built there, being around the people, the artists, um, being pushed through competition, picking the brains of artists and other people. And uh, very sad I'm not there this year. This is the weekend I would have been there right now. So I um, uh, can't wait for uh, next year and to be with all of you. And uh, hope this inspires you to do some more carving. Thanks a lot.